Hey everybody, it's Triple L here to catch up with 406 and talk about 407 of My Hero Academia. Hey everyone. Oh, I should probably zoom in just a little bit more. Cool. Hey everybody, hope you're having a good day. I didn't do 406 last week because, well, I didn't think there was that much to talk about. I thought like, okay, you know, 406 will probably be directly followed up in 407. So I can talk about 406 and 407 in one place. Um, I thought that would be the better move. Um, 407, however, went into a flashback, which I wasn't, I, I really thought we were going to get more of a back row beatdown before we did a flashback, but there we are. We're at 406. So let's get into it. Um, 406, we shouldn't spend too much time there. Uh, with 407, I just tell you from now, I think 407 is amazing. I think 407 is a great chapter. Um, I never thought All for One was that petty, but turns out he is. Um, 407 has a lot of implications about the nature of Quirks as well, and there's like some little concerning things here and there. When I say concerning, I only mean, you know, just in terms of like the overall narrative about the origin of Quirks. Um, a lot of really cool little things going on in there. So let's go through the valuable parts of 406 first. So with 406, we begin the chapter with getting an update of what's going on. We know the we know that the hospital is okay. We can see it right here. We know that Okoto Island, Okuto Island is okay. We know that Aoyama's battlefield is pretty much all right. The initial location of the Divide and Conquer mission is secured. Inter being Tento, yeah. And finally, we find out that Ryukyu is actually hanging out in the area that has Gashly. So the big thing here is that, thank God, we confirmed Gashly is actually at Sato's battlefield. Now, there is a problem here. So I don't know if you guys like realize, but the people that can produce multiple of anything, multiple combatants are usually very dangerous. And in this case, we have Gashly here. Now, my zoom in might make this worse, but it looks like Gashly is creating clones. Um, also, it looks like Gashly really is based on that one book that has uh, like Gashly or something. Um, the fact that he's creating what really looks like giant fetuses or giant infants, um, I think fits with that little story as well. Anyway, we saw the issue that occurs when you have twice right like this is it makes it it makes sense why we're in a situation where gashley is actually still doing things um it's a clone producer so of th that actually it's really interesting that we have yet another cloner um i do think that shigaraki is going to become a cloner as well in order to give the other characters something to do in the final 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 pages of hero academia but that's neither here nor there we'll find out whether or not that happens uh let's move on to page two and three okay so on this page we find out skeptic has been captured doesn't really matter i guess you don't think it matters either um the escape to shiketsu this one's kind of important because we find out that heroes are still moving to move the people from the stalled block this is important because that stalled block might have a character that could create a uh, a small shift in the battlefields here um but this is a pretty big update uh, the fact that we haven't already moved them and we're just moving in to protect them, that's a pretty big sign. It's a pretty good card that Horikoshi can play later. Uh, we still don't have Eri's involvement. Right now, Eri is... Narratively, Eri has helped the villains and not the heroes. So we still need to get a moment of Eri getting to be a hero as well. Anyway, the Jakku hospital site, not a really big deal. And then page 3 is just the beginning of Bakko hype. Now, one thing that I see about 406 overall is that I really feel that 406 is a justification chapter for why back goes about to like absolutely destroy all for one. Um, that seems to be what it reads like. And I'm personally, you know, I personally did not need the justification. But uh, yeah, no, it's a hype up chapter. I'm pretty sure in the volume, it's going to read just fine. Okay, so page four, we have Bakugo um, just pretty much alluding that there's a side effect and that he is on the verge of grasping something essential. Um, on the other side, we have Izuku and Shigaraki. And this, these pages are pretty much there to set up the whole, like, let's go at maximum potential here um, on the next page. Uh, but with Izuku, what's important for him is he's acknowledging that Danger Sense is still keeping him alive. So again, Izuku is not a skill-based person like Mirio. He needs Danger Sense. Um, if Izuku actually had a normal education year, um, and actually had the opportunity to train with uh, Nidai, he probably would have developed the same fighting style that Nidai and Mirio had. But because he doesn't, he needs to use Danger Sense. Pretty basic. The author's always been very consistent about that. Anyway, Izuku's just pointing out that he has to come up with an answer on how to deal with Shigaraki's unique power set. It's always, you know, actually, like, props to the author for giving it, like, so succinctly right here. I really appreciate that. Um, then we say next time I use the uh, seconds gear shift will be the last. 
Um, doesn't matter how long it's active. As soon as it ends, the blowback will leave me immobilized. Um, so, you know, the thing is, Izuku, like, we were told that if Izuku wasn't able to end Shigaraki with the first use of it, the world would end. In other words, that'd be the end of it. So, with that, you know, like, I read this and I'm like, okay, Izuku, you're gonna be fine. Like, maybe that's when All Might comes in and, like, take us a blow for you or something. But, Izuku, you'll probably be fine. Like, come on. Um, you know, it's this is just Horikoshi. He does this. Moving on. Anyway, we have here uh, All for One in doing massive cope. Um, justifying why Bakugo is not all that, um, but still getting throttled by him. Um, and on the other page, we have Bakugo talking about how his work side effect works. Which pretty much just seems to me like it's just explosions from all over his body. So he just pretty much has more explosions. Um, it's pretty much like his efficiency just went up like wildly, you know? That's what I'm kind of seeing there. Just the efficiency went up wildly. Okay, so I'll just move past the page where Bakugo is just like showing how powerful his explosions are by just showing how he's pretty much taking damage. I gotta say, like in terms of the art, the art was always on point. Um, I do like just how destructive it seems and how Bakugo is just like running on pure adrenaline. I actually really do like the implementation on that. Anyway, uh, we move on and we have uh, All for One justifying why he hates Bat or why he's getting so angry. Um, there, one part I found interesting here is that hatred I harbor brings back the memory so vividly, right? It's always him. So this line, it feels like he's saying the hatred that I've been given from Shigaraki brings back the memory so vividly. That's what I would assume, but like this could also just be his own hatred. I personally think this is his own hatred because I think All for One does feel hatred. I mean, the next chapter just pretty much says it all over the place. There you go, buddy. Anyway, the next chapter says it all over the place. We end it with this one shot of Bakugo pretty much calling All for One a moron. I did see a translation that said, um, called him a senile fool. Uh, but yeah, we have a moment of senility from All for One as he recognizes Kudo in Bakugo. Um, me personally, I just think that Kudo is probably a long lost ancestor of Bakugo. Like maybe it's his great great uncle or something like that, you know? like. That's why I think the resemblance is there. I think there's a, some familial lineage going on. Anyway, 406, very fun. But ultimately, I think it was an update chapter plus just a uh, justification for why Back was about to beat this guy up so badly. The art was on point. Uh, let's move on to 47. Or oh, sorry, 407. And 407 is where the wild things are. It opens with, for about a year, the sex worker had been sus uh, suffering from hardened growths on her left arm wow guys you heard it here first quirk started as an std actually shit yeah if quirks are a virus or they started through a virus that was able to affect uh dna because i know there's viruses that can um switch up your dna and shit like that if quirk started as a virus it makes sense that they would start as a sexually transmitted virus okay like the mechanism is the the mechanism of transfer is the virus um affecting uh the various uh genetics but um yeah no you know what that's a great thought no wonder no wonder it maybe it maybe it actually is a virus we, we're going to talk about that when we get to the rats well we'll continue anyway um this first page is just a, like a, a big um exposition she wasn't aware of the pregnancy for the first eight months her unstable lifestyle wasn't the only reason then we get this horrific image something had been uh taken up residence in her uterus and had begun sapping away her life force now there's a lot of really weird things that pop up here so before we continue let's just very quickly make sure we're all on the same page we know that some quirks seem to and i say seem uh to affect the person's mind it feels like, like for instance, Toga. It feels like Toga has a compulsion based on her quirk. La Brava? La Brava seems to feel love more dramatically than every other people, and her quirk is related to love. Shigaraki has an impulse to destroy. So, you know, we have a situation where it does seem like quirks. Well, I think at this point, it's, it's, all, it's pretty much confirmed that quirks affect behavior to a degree. With All for One, we end up seeing something even beyond that we see it just by his very nature like this one part here like later in the chapter they describe it as like he he was stealing stuff from his brother and so it's like yo this guy isn't even alive to develop actual conscious thought and his nature is already there his nature is there from the very beginning that is very odd very strange 
why is his nature all about stealing from the very beginning right like this this takes it even further um beyond what toga had in that you know we're just seeing it before you can even be before you're even aware of yourself you already have your nature impacted by the thing that's inside of you it's very odd uh but at this point yeah it just really seeing the degree to which this goes it really comes back now to just like you know how much of a choice did all for one have in the things he did if he's already showing the nature of the all for one quirk just by doing this right he's not even out of the womb and he's already expressing the nature of the all for one quirk now one thing here though is that since we're talking about stealing the woman's life force and stealing nutrients from yoichi it really makes you think like can all for one take things other than quirks can he drain someone's nutrition can he drain um things coming or like can he if he had if there were two flows how how do you even say that okay if he has a direct stream coming into his body okay you know what actually if someone does a blood transfusion on all for one could all for one flat out just actively force all the blood out from one body into his just by the nature of the all for one quirk right it's weird it's weird that the whole stealing aspect of all for one is not affecting just quirks but it's affecting even this part of his origin it's very odd so like we're in a spot where either this is just like a coincidence or this is something that comes with the all for one quirk so that's going to be interesting i don't know if we're i don't think i think we're too late in the game to suddenly have a situation where all for one puts his hand on someone's mouth and like pretty much shrivels them up and he becomes healthy again i think we're too late in the game to show off that kind of power but really odd that we would go this far with this guy's origins okay so next part we uh, she gave birth to the twins on a riverbank and before dying on the spot uh the growth on her hand sorry on her arm had completely vanished that's pretty obvious what happened all for one stole the quirk again stole the quirk before also, some people have their quirks manifest when they're five years old. Meanwhile, this guy just had it from the moment he was in the womb. Very interesting. Um, so the two babies were alone in the world. And then we go into the most interesting part here. The goddamn rats. So here at the rats, this is concerning because we know Shizaki exists. We know Shizaki had a theory about quirks being an illness. Um, the rats show up and they go to gnaw the newborns and their mother's corpse. The flooding river, however, sweeps away the babies. So the babies survive. But the rats. So now when this is coming in, you got to look at Horikoshi. You got to wonder, like, is Horikoshi going to leave that one theory about the rats alone? And given that he likes to modify what we think is going to happen pretty often, he always adds like a little quirk to things. And given that he gets, gets so much value out of unreliable narrator, he gets it here too a lot of unreliable narrator value but given that now i gotta wonder if quirks we don't know what exactly causes quirks to happen but let's say that quirks happen and then they get transmitted through a virus right so the virus is in the body makes a makes a change to the human genome and okay cool that's what the virus did now the rats show up they consume the person and then now they are carriers of the virus. And now because rats are so good at because rats are so good at screwing people over, they just start propagating all over the place. Um, and that's how we end up in a situation where quirks are spreading all over the world. Welcome. All for one is not the first quirk user. It's pretty much his mother. We got spikes. And also the many times we've seen the spikes quirk really makes you wonder. Um, knowing that all for one how possessive he is, I I doubt he ever gave away this particular version of the spike quirk anyway moving on we go to one year later the news of the glowing baby was the first of many worldwide reports of emerging meta abilities so this is actually really um good that he said was the first of many all right so we're getting like just more um clarification of what was going on here i gotta say one year i think that's more than enough well it would well technically this woman was already active with those uh with those spikes for a while so technically, there's there's more than enough time for rats to start spreading all over the world. 
Okay, then we get the clarification that there were meta abilities that uh, didn't only present at birth, they also started to uh, appear after the fact in young people going through puberty. So um, this one, what I pretty much am wondering is who was the first pubescent child who uh, had a quirk? Who was the first that was born normal and then developed a quirk later? Technically, it would be the prostitute. That's That, that has to be who it is. Um, but I do wonder what exactly the timeline here is. Okay, then we have a research group saying that they hypothesized that a novel disease was to blame, and this is probably like where the whole rat theory comes out from. Anyway, the scientists go and they announce that the meta abilities are a sub branch of humanity, and whenever you say sub anything, that's when things get really dangerous. The declaration was reckless and premature. People are social organisms, so the statement divided them and added fuel to the chaos to come. All right, you know what? You just gave people a new th a new vector to hate in, right? So that's pretty much what goes on there. We go now into the destruction of society. Uh, the rest of this page isn't all that important. We go into uh, this page here with All for One. He looks pretty creepy. But again, nothing really important other than just seeing All for One using uh, the spike squirk. We go into the next page. And man, like this is actually a pretty metal shot. Like it looks so good. Um, and one thing that really like starts appearing in this particular page is just the reinforcing of how the all for one quirk works with quirks. But let's just continue here. Uh, the child was imbued with hubris and disrespect from uh, for others from the moment of his birth. That is crazy to me, in all honesty, man. That is crazy. <laughs> like, like there was no chance for all for one to be a good person if you're saying that he was just naturally like this from the very beginning. Anyway, uh, c confirmation that the spikes are the meta ability he stole from his mother. He viewed all within reach as his own possessions. Now, the thing here. Shigaraki, and thanks to White Despair for reminding me of this one. Shigaraki had pointed out that when he got the all for one quirk, it felt like he had had all his quirks from the very beginning. The nature of sophistication that we're seeing with the way that all for one uses spikes. Like, what else can you think? This is like, this is it. This is the final confirmation you needed. A hundred percent. The all-for-one quirk lets you use every other quirk to its maximum potential. Or at least gives you like high-level mastery from the very moment you, uh, you get that quirk. I think Skelly phrased it as the all-for-one quirks gives the same level of mastery of all-for-one to all other quirks that you hold. Um, and in this case, it's really interesting because the one-for-all quirk does not allow Izuku to do the same thing. Izuku has to learn it, whereas all-for-one can just use them out of the... just like that. One thing that really makes you think is just like all-for-one... You could have just been collecting all the quirks in the world. Like now, it doesn't even matter that they're hard to use. You can just use them. This is like a hundred percent confirmation. You can just. Anyway, it just makes you think about things in the beginning. Um, he should have just been more. He should have been more active about collecting those quirks, unless there was actually a memory limit that we haven't been talked to about yet. And we still need to know how he blew up Nagant. Okay. Anyway, point is, yeah, no, the mastery here is on a whole other level. And of course, you have this little thing. Of all for one holding on to his brother there because everything belongs to him everything all within reach as his own possessions okay so we move on those who uh, would uh, wouldn't turn to look at him when he cried and screamed those who wouldn't provide him with anything he viewed with other with utter distrust um so this is actually really important here because like you have some things going on with the first part like the people who neglect him pretty much he doesn't care for but yoichi yoichi never probably looked at him with those kind of feelings so when we're talking about utter distrust like you um all for one probably feels something other than utter distrust for his brother uh and the reason i'm bringing that up is just because it's really important that we start really getting serious about characterizing how all for one views his brother in particular we go into this wonderful little shot here now one thing that <laughs> at least we were correct about was that yochi was poor it looked that they, these guys were in poverty, but like this is actually a whole other level of just horrificness. Anyway, we find out here, most of the nutrition uh, provided by the mother was stolen by the older twin, leaving the younger twin small and frail. All right, just kick the child down. We then have more narration telling us that the smaller sibling provided him with nothing, but that was the sibling was still his possession and he would not uh, readily relinquish the sibling. So this is just a really bad pet owner. What it really comes down to is like, did All for One see Yoichi as a pet or as his brother, as his as his womb buddy? You know, is this like an Omni Man situation? 
in terms of the pet stuff, but um, I, I do think that Awful One probably feels uh, some kind of love towards his brother. Okay, so we move on, um, and we're pretty much like going into the whole thing with the comic books. We can see that Awful One is floating here, and I kind of have to wonder if that's Airwalk or whatever the floating quirk he uses is. Um, and then you have this little moment, the comics are just wow, it's like you read the pictures and they tell you the hopes and dreams of the people in the drawings. I feel like this part right here might be a little bit more of Hodikoshi in the sense of like, he's pretty much talking about like the cool thing about manga. Like the cool thing about manga is that yeah, you might not be able to read and understand all the words, but the feelings of the things going on in the drawings are being conveyed. And I think this in, this in particular is more poignant considering that Hero Academia has a very young audience, the chances are the youngest of the Hero Academia audience and fans don't fully understand like the implications of what's going on in a lot of the pages. Um, so, you know, this is probably some kind of reflection of Horikoshi's opinion on like what's so cool about manga. Anyway, you have this nice little moment where uh, All For One sits down with his... Uh, with his younger brother and now i have to kind of think knowing that these guys was pretty much like self-taught the entire time i have to wonder all for one the reason you didn't finish reading that comic was it perhaps because you could not read <laughs> all right okay so this is actually a really critical line he recalled that the hand uh, was all for one holding on to him and wanted to believe that his older brother his grip had been gentle and kind um what's critical here is the wanted yochi wants to believe that that grip was gentle and kind. Um, so we're in a situation where if the author decides, okay, you know what, Awful One actually is just warped to the core, then what this pretty much says is Yoichi's wrong. If he wants to like go for an idealistic one, yeah, like All For One actually was worried about Yoichi dying. Now, the really interesting thing here is that this comes back to the whole idea of like, why exactly did All For One give Yoichi the stockpile quirk? Was it because he wanted to cement his control over Yoichi? Or was it actually because like, he felt bad for everything that Yoichi had gone through, right? Um, at this point, I do think he kind of felt bad for Yoichi. I, I do think like that moment when All For One sits next to his brother to read a comic, I think that is probably like one of the most positive interactions that we've ever seen with All For One and his brother. Anyway, we then go into the spot about... Well, we go into the spot where you see just how petty All For One is and like, wow. All for one, you actually did it. You actually stole the quirk of the first baby. You at, Well, the first recorded baby. You actually did it. You actually got bothered that they had clout. And you went and you stole that clout. Well, not technically. But you went and you stole the thing. Wow. All for one. Like, you actually were that bothered. It, I'm just astounded. Like, yeah. Way to go, Horikoshi. Like, seriously. Like, yeah. Make him that kind of person. This is a, absolutely a very dangerous person. All right. So the baby had reached 10 million supporters. All for one found that weird just because they were technically the first. Uh, we have the thing about like two weeks ago in India alone, which also the spoilers made this very confusing. But this is this makes much more sense in the official. Um, and then just all for one just so innocently, like how they really managed to rally so many people to them. Isn't that just weird, buddy? Like that's weird, isn't it? And then just the reveal. Oh, yeah, I just went and stole. I just stole it. You know. Anyway, nah, man. This this was this was pretty this was pretty funny. Like this was this was so good. <laughs> okay, so um, we have the very quick origin of one for all, all for one. It was from a comic book, and we have all for one like rationalizing things. The hero has to suffer pretty much, and the demon king gets to just rule. Um, like I'm like you know what? Actually, seeing the way that heroes are treated, that that probably really soured uh, all for one and all kinds of heroics. Anyway, here we have All For One, you know, developing one of his critical traits, and that is that he wants the world to exist for him and him alone, pretty much. And then we go into the final page, which is, like, pretty heartbreaking. This moment when Yochi is running, and we actually see All For One's inner monologue on this. So, I think this was just really good, just because of how vulnerable it looks. I, I really love the line of that, that one's mine, hey, look at me. Um, like, yeah, they're just ignoring him. Um, and then we have just the full-on wipeout here. Now, what I'm going to ask you here, guys, is because like this whole this final page doesn't seem like it's exactly what happened. It looks more like a metaphor to me. And can you see the uh, energy effect here? Is this supposed to be the moment that one for all was transferred? Are we saying that um, Yoichi had blood on his hand or open wound and that blood mixed with uh, Kudo's Kujo? Is it Kudo? Yeah, I think it's Kudo. Oh, hello, sir. Hello, sir. 
Uh, yeah, is it cool though? Um, is this the moment it happened? Is that what we're trying to say? Uh, so I'm going to just hold my judgment on this one. I kind of want to see this less abstract, maybe with more background, just to understand what fully happened here. Anyway, yeah, um, it wasn't, we didn't really see the kill here, but I do wonder if All for One just blasted his brother. I guess the only big thing that we need to know is what exactly Yochi was saying to Buddy Guy, Baku Brow, um, as they were running. Because, um, like, again, we have to understand what exactly was Yochi thinking uh, when this possible transfer occurred. But, yeah, really excited to see how exactly this works out. We jumped pretty quickly in the timeline. We went from the moment of revealing that All for One had the Shining Baby's quirk to, you know, skipping over the entire incarceration part where Yochi gets locked up to just the escape, right? So we skipped over a good chunk of the timeline there. I guess looking at it, we're three years later... Um, we know we're 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 jumping through the timeline so quickly. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, like, there's a lot of skipping in the thing. Um, I don't know if next week we'll continue the flashback. Um, just because like seeing it from all for one's perspective, I feel like yeah, I feel like it wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to get the complete flashback. We need to see like Yoichi's side of this. Um, but I don't know if, if we'll get that next week. Um, one thing that people have pointed out about 406 is that all for one in the flashback in 406 he doesn't show that he's crying whereas we know he was crying when kudo had done it there we go anyway yeah overall very interesting chapter here at academia i am so curious about things going on um i would really like to go back to just seeing back go breeding up all for one but yeah i just don't know what else there could really be here in terms of telling us like we got pretty much the whole origin we have a, a good enough idea of their behaviors um, I guess we just don't see the moment he kills uh, the first, sorry, the second and third users, but yeah, hopefully we'll just go back to um, to back go. I understand why he hates Kudo because Kudo took something that belonged to him. I, I understand that, and it's his brother, so like, I who he's extremely possessive of. So if there's one thing you have to come away from with this chapter, it's all for one definitely has some serious atta attachment issues with his brother. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought down below. Until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.